I'm going to share some things with you today that at first you may think doesn't really go together but friend let me assure you that this book contains one theme that flows like the river of life giving life and hope to the hearer and quenching the thirst of the spiritually parched. That theme of course is Jesus Christ. Now the reason I'm making this video is because in the past I may have said that if people don't accept the payment of Jesus' blood for their sin then they have to go to hell and pay for it themselves. And I said that in the context of um, they're in hell forever and uh, they, they keep paying and paying and they can't get out because they can never really pay for their own sin. And um, I don't remember exactly what video I said that in. Perhaps it was on the old channel. But I've done a lot of thinking since then. And actually, the Bible shows us the real reason why people go to hell. You see, look in John chapter 3 in verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Look at John 3.36, same chapter. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, sin is not the issue for salvation. Christ has already dealt with that issue for all mankind once and for all. Look at 1 John 2, 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Look at 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also hath suffered, hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, and who might that be? Everyone. He alone is just, and all of us unjust. The Bible also says that, um, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for the ungodly. He died for the sins of the whole world, all of mankind. Continuing on in 1 Peter 3.18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now, look at 2 Corinthians 5, verses 18 and 19. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And I want you to notice with, with Paul, um, he, he'll use the words like us and they, and there and them. And it helps us understand who he's talking to or talking about. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That, of course, friend, is the gospel. Um, it's a very simple gospel. It's one that, that uh, so many mock, whether it's Brian Denlinger or uh, the Calvinist like Piper and MacArthur, uh, you can't just simply believe. It's not good enough for them. And look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friend, this is a hard thing to grasp, but Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world, even Adolf Hitler. If he had believed the gospel, he could have went to heaven at the end of his wretched, miserable life. But you know, there's people that will say, oh no, that just couldn't be. And they will deny that the thief on the cross went to heaven. Um, well, first he went to paradise and then he went to heaven. They deny that uh, King Saul, King Solomon, 
because they transgressed, they fell into sin, that they went to heaven. Um, even though Solomon is called my son by the Lord himself, and Saul, the Bible plainly teaches, had a changed heart, and uh, Samuel said, you're going to be with me today. They deny all this because the start of the whole thing is this hyper-dispensationalism where in the Old Testament it had to be faith plus works. And I know there's quite a number of people that teach that, such as uh, Peter Ruckman taught it, Brian Denlinger, uh, little Ruckman Jr. there, he, he teaches it. Robert Breaker teaches it, that you had to have uh, faith plus works in the Old Testament. And folks, that does not line up with Scripture when you look at all of Scripture together. It was not the blood of goats and bulls that took away the sin of the world. It was the precious blood of the Lamb, the spotless, unblemished Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. That alone pays for the sins of the whole world. That was the acceptable sacrifice to the Father, and He will accept nothing less. Now we are speaking of that beloved Son in whom He is well pleased. It's not the blood of bulls and goats. Now, as I said, God even died for Adolf Hitler, even the most wretchedest, vilest sinner. And people go to hell not because of their sin, but they go to hell because they will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who took care of it all. The sin is not the issue now. That that is what um, the devil wants people to believe to prevent this ministry of reconciliation from taking place so that man can be reconciled to God through faith alone by believing upon the Son of God. The devil doesn't want that. He wants to complicate it with your works because if you try to bring your works to the table, your works are filthy rags. The, your righteousness is as filthy rags. It's not acceptable in the sight of God. There's going to be a group uh, that says, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and thy name cast out devils, and thy name done many wondrous works? He's going to say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. What were they bringing to the table? Their works. Friend, you and I, we don't have one good thing that we can point to ourselves within ourselves. To say, Lord, I'm worthy. I'm acceptable in your sight because I did thus and thus. All we have is the Lord Jesus Christ. We have his finished work on the cross. And that is all that we can cling to. That's all that we can cling to. Just like that old hymn, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. We don't have anything in our hand to offer God. Our righteousness, our works are filthy rags. Oh, but friend, we got something far better. We can, we can cast all that aside. It's all dung. It's, it's counted as dung because now we have the precious blood of Jesus Christ that washes away all of our sin. Now, Paul said that he was the chief of sinners in 1 Timothy 1.15. It says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Though Paul was a saint, while in the flesh, he still considered himself a sinner. Now, as I was talking here where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Some people might think that there is a conflict because um, the Bible says that God loved the world, but we are told not to. Look at 1 John 2. 1 John 2, 15-17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now we're going to talk about the will of God and the commandments of God. Uh, just a minute, but what I want to point out here is that the Bible here is not speaking of the people, it's speaking of the world system, this corrupted evil world system. Uh, friends, there's just no way that we can love it. Uh, there's nothing there for us. This world is not our home. 
we're just passing through it. Our conversation is in heaven. Our way of life, our manner of life is in heaven. We have our treasure stored up there. And even if we didn't have heaps of gold and silver and precious stones waiting on us, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. So what more could we ever want? Now, what is the will of the Father? Look at John 640. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So the will of the Father is to believe on the Son. That is the will of the Father. Look at 1 John 2.3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So now we're talking about commandments, the will of the Father. Verse 4, he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So what are his commandments? Same little precious book of, of 1 John will tell us. Look at chapter 3, verse 23. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now, notice the order of this, okay? We cannot follow the second commandment without the first one, okay? Uh, you can't really love other people uh, without believing on the Lord Jesus Christ first. It is through the might and power of the Holy Spirit that um, he conforms us to the image of, of the dear Son of God. And... Without that, we can't do the second one. Look at verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. Why? Because he's believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. That's the only requirement. You have to believe on his finished work on the cross. He shed his blood on the cross. He was buried. He rose again. And uh, his resurrection proves that we have victory. That we will have eternal life. That indeed we have it now. Um, God looks at it in the eternal perspective as his promises are so sure. The Bible says the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. The promise is so sure, so going to happen that he promises eternal life right now even while we're in this mortal flesh body. Uh, we can be assured of it. That is true eternal security. And so many people deny that and in so doing they deny the gospel. Uh, that is that is denying Jesus Christ himself when you deny eternal security. That's why all these uh, teachers get messed up with this hyper-dispensationalism um, saying that Saul lost his salvation and Solomon and so on and so forth. Uh, that is not rightly dividing the word of truth. That is grave error. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. So there it is. No one goes to hell for their sin, but because they rejected the Son of God, the very propitiation for their sin. And our sin, indeed the sins of the whole world. Now many hate this message and will mock it. Brian Denlinger comes to mind where he says, Believe, believe, just believe. And he thinks it's funny. He laughs, thinks it's a joke. He is laughing at the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only thing that can save mankind, the only thing. There is no works that we can bring. Our works are filthy, unrighteous, unholy, unacceptable in the sight of God, and it mocks the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, puts him to an open shame by trying to present anything ourselves that we can show God to prove that we deserve to go to heaven. There is nothing. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. What a beautiful line of a song. Now, it is this simple message that will save men's souls and snatch them from a broad road that leads to destruction. For us who believe, who have simply trusted in the finished work of Calvary, it is the most wonderful news in the whole, in this whole wide wicked world. And it is the joy of this testimony that allows us to see one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. This is something the wicked false gospel teachers do not understand. They cannot understand. Because their gospel kills and our gospel gives life. 
because that life comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Knowing that we are not beset and burdened down with the weight of sin that was cast behind him into the sea of forgetfulness that that was buried with him and done away with that we don't have to to uh, be burdened with that will help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ that Satan can't come back and attack us every day and say look at you you wicked little sinner look what you're doing look look at this look at that we rest we rest in the glorious grace of the Lord Jesus Christ knowing that someday this vile body of ours will be put off. Now, folks, it's not a license to sin. It's a, a license to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's a license to, to be who God wants you to be in the fullness, in the, the very maximum that you can possibly have on this earth because we have a hope eternal that does not fade away. We know that someday this body of ours is corruptible body will put on incorruption and we will live with the Lord Jesus Christ forever that is where we belong that's where we're supposed to be we're supposed to be with him we are one with him and uh, we're all one in Christ together through the might and power of the Holy Spirit so that's gonna do it for this little video um, uh, God bless you and take care